Hello there, I'm Susanna and thank you for tuning in. And today I've got the story of John Henry from the Dawn Shops, which was written and illustrated by Joyce Lancaster Breezy. John Henry and the Runaway Toys. John Henry was a little boy who had lots of toys. His father gave him toys and his mother gave him toys and his grandpa and his grandma and his uncle and his auntie and even his little cousins all gave him toys for Christmas and birthdays and sometimes in between days too. John Henry liked to play with them nearly all day long but John Henry had not a very nice way of playing. He always pretended his toys were naughty so that he could scold them and beat them and he played this game so often that they were all very, very shabby, even those which he had quite a long while. One day, he was playing schoolmaster in the garden with Golly and Teddy and the soft, fat little ragdoll Muffin, when there came by post from his grandma a big brown plush monkey. John Henry promptly sat him in a row with the others and began to examine him. Where's Africa? he asked sternly. Plush Monkey didn't know, and thump, thump went John Henry's fist on Plush Monkey's side. How do you spell cat? D-O-G. Plush Monkey was made to say, and got another beating. And so it went on until Plush Monkey was put face to the wall in a dusty, cobwebby corner of the garden, and there, left, forgotten. Three weeks later, when Grandpa and Grandma came to pay a visit and look at the flowers, John Henry suddenly picked up a strange object, sodden with rain and covered with mud. Why, it's Plush Monkey, he exclaimed. Doesn't he look nasty? He must be thrown away or he'll make me dirty. Grandma looked at Plush Monkey and said slowly, I don't think we will give any more toys to John Henry until he knows how to play with them. And Grandma and Grandpa didn't, which was very wise of them. One day, Uncle and Auntie came to tea and brought John Henry a whole family of green frogs made of cotton wool with squeakers inside. John Henry was very interested and took the frogs behind a big armchair and pulled them all to pieces to get the squeakers out, though he didn't want them when he saw them. When Uncle and Auntie were going, they saw the bits of cotton wool and wire which had once been little frogs, and Uncle said slowly, I think we had better not give John Henry any more toys until he knows how to play with them. And Uncle and Auntie didn't, which was very wise of them. One day, the little cousins came to play with John Henry in the nursery and John Henry told them how bad his wooden horse was and he started jerking the reins until it reared and pranced and fell about on its sides whereupon John Henry shouted whoa gee steady and lashed poor wooden gee with his whip now the little cousins had clubbed to buy this wooden horse for John Henry's last birthday and when they saw it all shabby and battered, with its mane and tail half gone and the shiny stripes peeling off its sides, the eldest little cousin cried out, We won't give John Henry any more toys, for he doesn't know how to play with them properly. And the little cousins didn't, which was very wise of them. But John Henry continued to be just as rough and unkind to his toys. In fact, one day he beat them all just because they looked so shabby and he was used to lots of smart new ones. And then a strange thing happened. It wasn't because they heard the clock strike midnight, which is when they say toys come to life, because it was only about three o'clock in the afternoon. But anyway, Wooden G suddenly backed and tugged his reins out of John Henry's hand, prancing so wildly that he pranced right off his wooden stand. And golly, Teddy Bear and Rag Muffy raced alongside of him through the nursery door and John Henry heard them clatter down the stairs and across the tiled hall to the front door. Come back, come back, he shouted loudly. 
with their feet by clattering on the pavement outside and running to the window, John Henry saw the four pattering and prancing up the road, round the corner by the park and so out of sight. John Henry stood in the middle of the floor and stared round blankly. The evening passed very slowly, for he had nothing to play with. When bedtime came, he went up the stairs with a lump in his throat because there was no Golly and Teddy and Rag Muffy to share the pillow with him. Mother looked surprised and thought he had forgotten them, but he muttered something about not wanting them and burrowed deep down into the bedclothes, for he was ashamed to tell why they had all run away from him. Next day, he didn't know how to amuse himself. Mother said, why don't you take Golly and the rest for a ride round the garden on Wooden G? Then John Henry burst out crying and told Mother that all his toys had run away because he was so unkind to them. Oh, John Henry dear, said Mother, I'm really not at all surprised. But don't cry and you shall have a new toy. But I don't want a new toy, sobbed John Henry. I want my wooden G and Golly and Teddy and Darling Rag Muffy so I can be so kind to them now. And suddenly, so far away came a faint sound of little clattering steps. They're coming back, breathed John Henry. He listened. The little steps were coming, clattering across the hall and clattering up the stairs, getting louder and suddenly the nursery door opened. Why, John Henry, you're all in the dark, said Nurse's voice as she turned on the light and put the jingling tea tray down on the table. John Henry sat up on the hearth rug, blinking in surprise. Well, well, I do believe you've been to sleep, said Nurse, setting the cups out. And just look at your toys all over the floor, pick them up and come and have a nice tea. As John Henry picked them up, he patted them lovingly and thankfully. Wooden G and Golly and Teddy and Rag Muffy. And no one, not father or mother or grandpa or grandma or uncle or auntie or the little cousins or even nurse, ever guessed why from that very day, John Henry was so very much kinder to all his toys.